people that I've admired as a teenager <laughs> growing up. <laughs> Look at you. Um, you know, and has you know, inspired not just me, but a whole lot of a generation of artists and communities and people um, and being who we are. Uh, so um, it's, it's a real privilege, I have to say, sister, to um, sit next to you, one, but also um, to really introduce you as our Matarangi Mahi Toy Artist in Residence at Government House. <laughs> So you may know, Rosanna was here last year and she opened a fabulous show in Engine Room that I'd love to talk about now. Um, also, uh, Rosanna um, delivered one of the most fantastic Peter Turner lectures um, at Te Papa last year. So um, in some senses, there's no need to really reintroduce Rosanna to everyone here. Um, yeah, so we're really, really lucky to have you here. Um, we're really keeping this conversation really loose. I was, you know, like um, a very social and um, there's going to have some opportunities for um, some of our team and staff here to introduce and Mihi, who you are here. I might actually just kick that off. How's mm, that? That's good. Talk about who you guys are because, you know, we're a small enough number. Um, what you know about Rosanna, what you know about Pacific Sisters and just to um, further welcome Rosanna into the fold here. So, okay, before we start, I just want to, um, everyone raise your glasses, please. Give the person next to you a bit of a toast and say cheers. Oh, cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Um, take us back to one week ago. You mentioned that earlier. Where were you one week ago from this point onwards? Oh my what was happening? What was happening? I was gathered with a group of Pacific sisters in the green room at Te Papa, getting ready to to actually activate our space. So there was sort of no pressure because they said that there was a group of VIPs going to be walking along with us. But yeah, so basically it was one of those jobs about 18 months of sort of work. Well, 25 years of life in 18, yeah, in 18 months of, of actual work it starts all of a sudden to get real. So yeah, so I was standing backstage actually with a mask on. I had a course, a tupper corset that's cut underneath, of course. <laughs> so I had my susus out, had a beautiful big tusk necklace I made, and, and I had very big extended hips so that they were as wide as the posts of a fale, and a big skirt. So I was looking like a lady, which, wow. which yeah, doesn't happen very often. And I was standing there with eight of my sisters that have been on a journey with us for over 25 years so it was pretty emo we were pretty emo in fact I'm still pretty emo I think because oh. <laughs> it was quite incredible to um to do that but actually I have this lasting memory because so I had I was planted here we had Emma Lyon here who was our 21st century cyber sister who which mm -hmm. was the first ever sort of kakahu that an institution had commissioned off the Pacific sisters so we pre that we presented that to Te Papa, and it was the opening of Te Papa. So essentially, we wanted to present it to them because we don't just believe in picking up your artwork. It doesn't happen like that, you know, it's in the post, gives the money. So we wanted to present the, 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 the living aspect of it. And essentially, we ended up, as a group of women, I ended up being the first woman ever to speak on that pai pai and maybe one of the last too. Because even though when they opened up that marae and said it was for pan-cultural and pan, pan sort of, sort of things, it wasn't actually. So when I actually put it into practice, they still couldn't quite let go of the, of the, the, the protocols that, that are installed inside a sacred space, like a marae. So it was really interesting, even then, the protocols that we, we didn't take that position lightly. So when we, we talked about the fact that, I mean, we were the Pacific sisters, so the, the male aspect was sort of always present, but it wasn't at the, at the helm. And so we got advised as we came in through the pi to actually sit under pi pi. So rather than to sit in the line of fire, so essentially to take us out from the line of fire, because we had no men, so we had essentially no men to talk. 
Not so, that we would have let them anyway. This is yeah. Wh when when did Te Papa open? Yeah, twenty years ago. Twenty years, 20 ago. years ago, because yeah. it hadn't even been open to the public. So this was the day yeah. before it opened to the public. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was amazing. Yes. Yeah, so, so we trip chop trip chopped, and then there was eight of us, almost the same lineup, but not mm -hmm. quite. Mm -hmm. So we sat down, and I remember all, all the komato are like. And they sent off one of the kui, and she, she comes and she sits down and she goes, where are your men? <laughs> and I remember laughing, going, it's Pacific Sisters. <laughs> and it was classic, the look in her eye was fair, I went, priceless. She was like, <laughs> and she trips, trops over to the, to the, to where they're all sitting and tells these men that, mm. yeah, it's the Pacific Sisters. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you remember yeah. who was with, with the Ropu when he's walked into oh Tamaki Hawaii? Was it Suzanne was there, no way. Eh? Yeah, Suzanne Tamaki is one of the founding members. Nephi mm. Tupaya is one of the founding members. Ani O'Neill, myself, mm. Lisa Ray Hanna, and then Emma Lyon. So essentially the four makers that had contributed to the 21st Century Cyber Sister. So each of us had sort of contributed some, some adornments to create her as a whole. And we had her wrapped up in a whāraki and a mat. And so as we sat on the pai pai, she was our, she was our century. Mm. She was, yeah. And then we unwrapped the mat, put the mat on the floor and then I got up to speak. I can't even remember what I said, but I was shaking. And it was interesting because I kept seeing um, Cliff Whiting, mm -hmm. and I kept asking, like, "Oh my God, we're going to get a hiding." <laughs> oh, it's just like, yeah, you know, I was waiting for it, and it, but it was quite incredible. And then, so we, as we talked, then I think it was only one of the other sisters would actually take off what we had made. And we ended up lying it on the mat. So, but by the end of the presentation, our cyber sister was just left in some, just actually in a simple body stocking. Mm. And then, so it was really trying to find the space between Māori and Pacific protocols inside a very defined Māori space. So it was, it was really interesting set of negotiations. But I think that really sums up a lot of the Pacific sisters in terms we were, there was Māori, Pacific, we always tried to find common shared ground and then how we could keep the tikanga or the tika, but make it appropriate for us. So it wasn't just plonking tikanga on or just doing that, but ensuring that the kawa was set and that it was appropriate for what was happening. And that is actually my understanding of what tikanga really is in terms of what is actually appropriate and, and right. So it was a really special moment on both sides. Yeah, and then Cliff Whiting got up and he, he just started to cry. Mm -hmm. And it was incredible. And then he said we'd, we'd sat right underneath Hini Nui Te Pō and how appropriate it was mm -hmm. that this was the first voice that, that had spoken on that pai pai. Mm -hmm. So yeah, 20, 20, years, 20, later, years, 20 years later, the old girls are out the back getting frocked up. <laughs> Old 21st cyber century's got a whole lot of girls hanging out. She's like, what? Yeah. Where do these bitches come from? <laughs> has, has anyone seen the show yet? Hands up. Who's gone and seen the show? Pacific Sister Show. Wow. Yeah. Do you want to talk a bit about the welcoming procession that we were really lucky to be a part of? Oh, or, look. Or a, a, yeah, that a was another. Yeah, well, that was sort of another sort of realm with, you know, they, they all kind of wanted the extravaganza. So basically the Pacific Sisters were sort of, we're part frock, part activists, and mostly frock, and <laughs> yeah. But we take the role set, so that I know they wanted some sort of extravaganza to open up the night. We kept going, no, we're not here to entertain you guys. Mm -hmm. this, is, this, is, this, this needs to be opened and activated in an appropriate manner for us. So this, so what we wanted to do was a, a ceremony that, that had meaning to us that wasn't necessarily for the public, but, but was open to the public. But it, it wasn't by any means a big sort of event. Mind you, didn't have enough money for a big event anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, 
<laughs> so I was like, oh, what can you afford? Oh, okay, right. <laughs> but that's a whole other issue. So we wanted to acknowledge a few things. One, the fact that it was getting the band back together. Mm. So after, so Suzanne lives in Wellington. I had been in London for 16 years. Annie O'Neill lives in Rarotonga. Nephi, we've lost. Mm. She is a somewhere. And then we, we've got Lisa Rayhana, you know, who's a rock star. So, <laughs> so it was an incredible opportunity to us to reweave our own relationship back together in terms of, of a collective and reflect on that 20 or so years mm. of, of activity. But I keep saying, you know, I didn't want to be framed in the past because it's such a thing when you sort of go into those institutions and they say major retrospective and I was like, well, we ain't dead yet. I know we're old, but <laughs> we're not that old. <laughs> so I was like, so it was, um, so I wanted something that, that acknowledged the brevity and also to acknowledge that we have lost members, that there are certain members and they're actually that they're all, all, all the males. So there's, there, there's four of our hardcore group that are, are no longer with us. So we wanted to acknowledge that and sort of clear the space. I always call it cultural health and safety. So, so you know, so for us. So we used Henry Afu Taripo, who's Ani's uncle. He wrote a pude. He wrote a karakia for us in Cook Islands Māori. And, and again, it was, I called a wānanga together so that we could noho and, and just reweave ourselves back together. And, and it's all about offering, who can offer what? And, and then how will you weave that together to express, you know, a movement as one. So we, we've often used sound. So I often use the pāte, the, the, the drum, the wood slow steady pace often use it to chase away the gods the bad ones the iku. Mm, mm. so that's why we had the part there mm. and to to absolutely clear the space through sound in terms of a lot of us still our our language skills and our cultural skills you know still not up to, to scratch there, nobody was comfortable to do a karanga so we use sound and we processed in, and then we, this is where the doors, so we were waiting outside the Amakura and there's all the blah blah going on, so it's all the blah blah, thank you, thank you, thank you, yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Jacinda did a great speech. Mm -hmm. A really powerful speech. A really powerful speech, mm -hmm. so if she can actually make that happen, that would be interesting in terms of acknowledging the artists, because here we were as artists, and you know $8 million has been spent on that building, and I won't even tell you what we invoice them for, for that project. So still the money is going into the build and into the surrounds and into the thing on the wall and, and the lighting. And it is not trickling down to the artists. So in a way, I was standing there going, same shit, 25 years later. And we used to pay ourselves more than what Te Papa gave. So yeah, you guys are going to get an opening, all right? <laughs> oh, yeah. And then on the flip side, it was such an honour to to be given a space where our work could be recognised, and and sort of it's a slow trickle, but there, there's still yeah. So it's interesting that the doors open. Yeah, there am I standing there, hands on hips, this wide, susus out. There's 21st century cyber sister, Susu's out, tatau, a 10 inch dildo covered in tupper cloth with big shell bolos and some tusks. <laughs> <laughs> and some beautiful um, weaving that she had made in a big quarry. And that is what the Jacinda opened her eyes to. <laughs> like, hey. <laughs> her beautiful little face was great. I'm like, yes, <laughs> smile, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> then we had Lisa Rayhana, Jonu Ilolahia, and FIFA, and that's when we actually turned our backs and, and processed. 
and walked and literally w slowing down the ta and the va so that the time and the space literally slowed down so that when we gathered into the gallery just outside with our kaitiaki where the K is standing, we were greeted by the other Pacific sisters and then we had a minute of silence. So it was just acknowledging all the past and those who have passed. And I think that at that point, I think people realised this wasn't a little song and dance with, with a whole lot of frockies. Mm. Yeah, and then we turned around and Annie O'Neill did a Cook Island Turo, and it's the first time she's done one, so mm. it was still about learning and activating our cultural heritage and and then Henry slayed them. Uncle Henry in his big wig and feathers and white kimono and 125-year-old mm. tavaivai over, over his shoulder um, slayed them. So there, there was a lot of tears. Mm. It was so beautiful. It was, yeah, it, was. It, it was like, I was just standing there, just like, <laughs> I won't cry, I won't cry. I'm crying again. <laughs> No, it was, it was a beautiful moment, like, um, you know, and, and yeah, that slowing down, because you do this, you know, really high level, blah, 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 in, in one space, mm -hmm. and then they announce, could all the Pacific Sisters VIP, please, VIPs, please step on the white carpet, <laughs> and you mince down the white carpet, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a VIP, and then, and then you get into this mode, and Ngata and I were just in awe, actually. Um, just of the, how, how you've brought a lot of the spirit into that space with the opening. And, I, and most people were crying, you know. I think um, most everyone was just in, over real, in a real sense and really proud to actually be there and proud of you guys. Yeah, that on, was it was a huge moment and a, and a historic moment, I have to say, in Pacific Art. We used to have that show. So just further congratulations again. Mm -hmm. But a real honour to be there. You know, everyone that was in that space walking in with Jacinda and co, we felt really, really lucky to be part of, of your celebration. So, yeah. so was, congratulations. It was pretty, pretty yeah. Mm. You can, there's a video of it online going around if people are interested. I know, they, like they, live, they, live feed, they would said they'd live, live feed it into, mm. the, into the thing. I didn't realise mm. they were live feeding it onto <laughs> to <laughs> Facebook, but yeah. anyway, yeah. it's classic. So pretty, em yeah, mm -hmm. I was like, wow, that was a week ago. It's it incredible. Was. And then just to see people inside the space, I think that's when I really was like, wow, mm. that this is this is way beyond us. This is you know, yeah. just it was really pretty cool. Mm. It's really cool. Really. Mm. Yeah. So you're here for a few more weeks. So um, what, what we've negotiated is that Rosanna's gonna be doing one month seasons with us mm. here at Messi. So each season has a cope up, and the season we've determined is about resting and, and dreaming and coming up with ideas. <laughs> <laughs> every, every artist needs to rest. And, um, but has it been a good week thus far? Oh, it's been amazing. Yeah, you do. You need to, um, you know, Moana Nipia wrote a PhD on te kore as a methodology of creativity. And in terms of the absolute necessity of stillness, so that that unlimited potential can start up again otherwise you get burnt and th uh, that phd changed my whole sort of i just love love that so yeah so i'm sort of going to hang out in te kore for a while and mm. sort of explore the unlimited potentiality of the time and space that i have here mm. and really try and i was when we were talking and you know it's when you do residency sometimes you, you have to kind of you know rewrite pre-write everything you have to do this and that and this and that and then you get there and you do this and that and this and that and then meanwhile especially if they're quite you find all these other little things you're like oh but hey that's great but then they go no but you said you're going to do this and that you can't do so I think it's it's a fantastic approach to be able to develop the actual pace and structure of of the outputs and outcomes inside it rather than predetermining them and not allowing any room to actually truly sort of find you know those little gems that are really hard to find when you just got your head down doing what you're told or what you mm. said you were going to do 
And so I've already got quite excited even just with some of the conversations I had with some of the mob. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. excited too. Yeah. I'm just going to put it out there. Are, are there any questions or any, does anyone want to ask anything or comment on anything? Matthias, what's that face about? Is it a, is it a question or a comment? Mm. It's just so wonderful to hear your story. That's all I want to say. Yeah. Mm. So, don't have anything to add to that. Just Mm. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much. Aww. Thanks, Matthias. Hey, Michael, you've got a serious question face going on. <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, I was just wondering about like 20 years ago when you first did, went into the opening and um, like navigating that area of working with Tikanga and being all like blacking out from the phone and stuff, like how do you? How did you go about knowing where to like, push and, you know? That, that's, that's those, where to push and where to hold back yeah. and, yeah, uh, you know, I mean, Maui's always been sort of that guy who shows you if you push too far, yeah. <laughs> what can happen to you? <laughs> so I've always been very, uh, and, and the sisters were, we, we you know, a lot of the, some of the members had really strong tikanga and we were lucky at the time, uh, Emma Lyon's partner is incredibly steeped in, in her Māori tikanga. And so we literally had a two day hui yeah. to talk about the implications of wahine only showing yeah. and the implications and what statement, in fact, if we wanted to make one, uh, regarding that, we could have gone and got some males, but you know, but I mean, the, the brothers who we usually work with, that they weren't available, so we weren't just going to go get some, you know, for the hell of getting some, you know, for the sake of um, uh, making sure that the tikanga was sort of followed in in that very particular mode of operandus. But I think if we, you can only kind of push or, or intervene or when you really truly understand what's going on, because if there's any cracks, then, then, then our people will crack them open. And yeah, and we've definitely, the Pacific Sisters, there's a few times where we, we, we got pulled up and you know, who are you? Who are you to do, who are you to tell that story? And so we, we were very conscious that when we did step into those realms that, that we approached it with the utmost sort of honour. And I think that's why we survived that, you know, I think especially when they saw where we sat, those older, those elders, they, they knew, they knew we'd, we had done some homework. So that was the first clue. So, and then when they, and then actually the, the fusion of the Pacific Island way in between, like, mm. like with the gift giving ceremony and you make a big song and dance about it, mm. man, you sit mm. there and you, <laughs> look what I gave there, <laughs> woohoo. Yeah. yeah, so, mm. so there was a lot of celebration mm. going on in, in, in between the, and just the explanations of, of what was, of what was going on. And it was, it wasn't, a, it was, it was one of those moments, it didn't hit me till actually years later, when I saw a photo of me in one of, in like a book, and there I was standing up, I had the tinoranga tira tanga flag wrapped around me and my leather jeans, and, and, <laughs> and I had my head down, my eyes cast down, you know, so, and, and there's Emma standing there, you know, it was, I was just like, wow, that must have really, really gave them something to think about. And, but as I said, without that understanding, we, we, we wouldn't have been able to do it or we would have blundered and then those thighs would have closed and <laughs> we would never have seen the light of day again. <laughs> about shoes, boys, and drugs that we used to do. <laughs> it's way more interesting. <laughs> yeah, you too. Uh, <laughs> 20 years but, um, ago. <laughs> Anyway, so I'm just going to end really rapidly and fun, my sister. Favourite pair of shoes that you have? 
that I actually my brogues, my mm. English brogues that I'm not wearing today, but I mm. bought them down so I could stomp around Wellington in them. They're about f about 10, 15 years old. Wow. Even the old Englishman used to stop me in the streets. I go, where'd you get those? <laughs> but they're handmade, of course. Mm. So they're pretty cool. We love mm. we love the brogues. Mm. What? Mm. No. What? Though I wouldn't have been able to afford those. <laughs> <laughs> There's like. Yeah, boy crush that you have, or general crush you have at the moment. <laughs> celebrity crush. <laughs> celebrity <laughs> crush. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Um, Lisa Ray Hunter. Yeah. <laughs> she is brave. She is brave. <laughs> Favorite party that you've been to in the past two years? Oh my god. Chromosome, chrys chrysalis chromosome that Akashi did oh, in oh, Okalani, so. the Fafswag crew. Yeah. yeah. What oh, happened? I just was one of the, like, it's one of the first times I understand lit. <laughs> lit. Yeah, lit. I was like, oh, this is lit. Yeah. Now I know what these young people are talking about. <laughs> I thought it was about lighting too. Yeah. Like, <laughs> 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 yeah I'm lit. There was. You know, and, you know. Um, Anyway, I'm not going to go in on any further. <laughs> Give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> and a huge round of applause for our Pacific Sister here, Rosanna Raymond. Loud, loud, loud. loud. I can loud. Like. Yay. Okay, drink and be merry. Yay. And eat lots of cheese. Yay, Friday.